Hey, what's going on guys? This is Beg Brace. Hope you're all doing well. Today's topic is a very important one, especially if you want to become a full stack web developer or a backend developer. Today we're going to be discussing the main differences between SQL and NoSQL databases for the next 15 minutes or so. This is in fact a question that I have received a few times and I decided to explain the main distinctions between both creeds if I may say. So let's check out the main points that we're going to be discussing during this video. So this is the table of contents. What is SQL? what is NoSQL, a guide on how and what to choose, and when would you want to use SQL or NoSQL. So first off, let's see what is SQL database management system. SQL is named for the language it's written in. It stands for Structured Query Language. It was developed by IBM in the 1970s, and this is the traditional relational databases where you have tables that consist of rows and columns, also called records and fields. So if you will hear me saying rows, records, sometimes I would say tuples, these are three synonyms for the same meaning. And also you might hear me saying column, field or attribute also the same meaning. So very often SQL database is built with a set of tables which compose that particular database. Very seldom that you will find one database only composed of one table. SQL also allows you to perform CRUD operations which means create, read, update and delete. So this kind of operations you might see let's say in a blog website. So you might want to create a blog post, you might want to read it, you might want to edit it or update it, and you might want to delete it completely. The next point is a little bit confusing for a lot of beginners. So SQL is the language. This is the structured query language, as we said. And the language is consistent across different relational database management systems. These systems or these engines like Oracle, MySQL or Microsoft SQL Server. So now it's safe to say that SQL is the language and MySQL is the engine for the language. And I took MySQL as an example. It's the same for any other engine out there. The overall structure of any SQL database is mainly in tables, and each table consists of rows and columns. Rows represent the records in that table, and columns represent the field for each column. All right, so these are the columns or attributes or fields and these are the rows or records or tuples all right and let's take a look to this table for example we have employee table with an employee id or employee number last name salary and region code and notice that employee id is a primary key and region code is a foreign key and a foreign key in one table might be the primary key in another table so for instance we have these codes 0001, 0002, 0003, which doesn't mean anything to us really. In order to understand the significance and the meaning of each of these codes, we need to refer to the regions table where each region code has a meaning. So 0002 means the Midwest region, 0001 means the Northeast, and 0003 means the South region. So primary key makes sure that that draw is not repeated across the table. And a foreign key prevents actions that might destroy any links between various tables. So I think now you understand the word relational database because we have different tables and there is some sort of relation between both tables through these keys. So that foreign key region code in the employee table is the primary key in that region's table. And this is the relation between both tables. And we might have multiple more tables as well link to both tables or link to one table only doesn't matter really the most important is you understand the architecture or the main structure of your database understand the link between all the tables and that's why sql is very flexible in terms of query performance so you can run or perform queries in a very easy and flexible way so all you need to do is let's say we want all the employees with the region code triple zero two so the syntax will be select star and star means everything. So we want to select everything from employee table where the region code is equal to 0002. And this resembles the filtering in an Excel sheet, for example. So running the queries in SQL is really flexible and easy. 
something that doesn't exist in NoSQL systems, and we're going to talk about that later. Another point is very important that these attributes have different data types. So last name, for instance, has a data type of varchar or variable character. Region code has a data type of integer. You might have um, joining date, for instance, which will have a data type of date and so on. So you have a lot of data types for all the attributes in that table. Also, one very important point in SQL systems that SQL databases enforces constraints. So constraints are used to define the rules for the data in that table. They are used to limit the data type that can go into a table. And the reason for that is to ensure the accuracy of data in table. Primary key and foreign key are examples of constraints. You have other constraints such as not null, check, default, unique for instance. Let's take a look to some of these constraints in the next slide. So not null is a constraint that ensures that a column cannot have a null value. Unique constraint ensures that all values in a column are different. Primary key is a combination of a not null and unique. It uniquely identifies each row in a table. A foreign key prevents actions that would destroy links between tables like we said. And default sets a default value for a column if no value is specified. Let's take a look to the scalability of SQL databases. So SQL databases are stored in one powerful strong machine, which has the entire database. So scaling the database this way is called vertical scaling. And I'm going to explain why it's called vertical scaling. So if you will start your database system in your company, for instance, you're not sure about the size that the database will hold. So you might start with a small machine, not very fast processor, um, computing power of that machine is not that strong. And as that database increases in size, you might want to have a faster processor, better memory, bigger hard drive, and so on. This technique is used when you are facing difficulties with your current machine in terms of performance, because as the size of database increases, you might want to upgrade your computer. But this is kind of limitation in SQL systems, really, because no matter how strong and how tough your computer or your machine is, there is some sort of ceiling that you will never cross. So the computer or the machine itself has some power, which is limited to the market. So the vertical scaling is used when facing difficulties with the current machine. In contrast to horizontal scaling in NoSQL systems, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Let's take a look to the accessibility in SQL. You'll also require a direct connection to the database endpoint. And nowadays we have a lot of ORMs or object relational mappers, and ORMs create that virtual object database that can be functional within any programming language. And I'm going to take Python as an example because this channel focuses more on Python programming language. So you have something like SQLite 3 in Django framework, for example. PostgreSQL or SQL Alchemy connections for Python is another example of ORMs. So they provide a link between database tables, including records and fields, and between the Python objects inside your class. All right, so we have covered almost everything that you need to know about SQL here. Let's move on to NoSQL database management system. What the heck is it? NoSQL is very different from the traditional relational database. There are no tables with columns and rows. So NoSQL stands for not only structured query language. First appeared in 98 and often is open source, which means it's free. It was developed as a response to web data, or big data, unstructured data. These three words have the same meaning. Also, you can use the word distributed data because it's not concentrated in one strong big machine like in SQL systems, but it's distributed across multiple read replicas. And I will show you that in a minute. Fun fact, 90% of the data in the world today has been created in the last two years. Every day we create 2.5 quintillion bytes of data, so much that 90% of the data in the world today has been created in the last two years alone. So not only can NoSQL systems handle both structured and unstructured data, but they can also process unstructured big data quickly. And this led to organizations such as, um, I don't know, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Google, 
to adopt NoSQL systems because of the unstructured tremendous amount of data that a normal SQL database with rows and columns cannot contain. Also NoSQL systems are based on what we call the document model, as I said, or document-oriented database. So the word collection in NoSQL world is equal to table in SQL world. So a collection of documents is equal to table of records in SQL realm. All right. So a collection is equivalent to table. Document is equivalent to records. Also, there are many forms of implementations for no SQL systems. So some takes the form of documents written in BSON with key value pairs, also in form of graphs and column family databases. NoSQL was originally built to solve the high performance issue, and it succeeded indeed to scale with high performance without overclocking the servers. But everything has a cost, and the cost in NoSQL was that your queries are less flexible than those in SQL systems. Now let's take a look to the structure or the architecture of NoSQL systems. NoSQL can be implemented under the form of documents, which in fact looks like a JavaScript object or more like a JSON document. But actually it's not JSON, but BSON, which stands for binary JSON. And the difference is that BSON has more additional data types. Also, there are column family databases that contain columns of related data and it consists of a key value pair. And finally, we have graphs implementations of NoSQL. And a clear example of that is LinkedIn or Facebook, where you have friends and your friends have friends and these friends have also friends and so on. So graph databases are very suitable for such representation. These three forms of NoSQL representation rely on a key value stores. So in a NoSQL database, you have to know the key you're looking for when you're performing your query. Now let's take a look to scaling in NoSQL systems. So in terms of scaling, NoSQL supports horizontal scaling, which means adding more computers or machines in a horizontal fashion. And this way you will distribute your data across multiple computers horizontally. So you have one main computer and multiple read replicas from which data can be extracted. And this actually helps in offloading the pressure from the master computer. And the result will be an optimal performance on the database. And this is in fact the case in all new SQL database systems. If you remember when we spoke about vertical scaling in SQL systems, we spoke about the ceiling of upgrading your computer. So as the ceiling is limited, we can now add more machines horizontally connected to the master computer. And that load on the master computer will be taken away because we can't access any of those read replicas. Now I hope you understand the difference between horizontal and vertical scaling in database systems. So the main question now is how and what to choose, SQL or NoSQL. In choosing between SQL versus NoSQL, you will need to think about what your data looks like, how you will query it, and your scalability needs, and take these questions one by one and ask yourself, why would you want to use SQL, for instance? So you might want to choose SQL if you are not sure if the way you're storing your data will allow you to query it in an effective way later then you might want to consider using SQL. Also, SQL is your choice if you want to run flexible database queries. And this makes total sense because if you're not sure about the way your data is stored, whether it's effective or not, you will want to stay flexible so you can adapt to changes in your business use cases. Also, SQL is your choice if you want to run relational queries. And this is the core of any SQL system. If you want to run queries that can jump back and forth among different tables, then SQL is your best bet. And finally, if you want to enforce field constraints in order to keep your data in your database consistent, then also SQL is definitely for you. All right, let's move on and check out why would you want to use NoSQL? Well, you might want to use SQL if your IO access pattern is defined and when you know exactly how you will interact with your database. And that's due to the lack of flexibility in the query system, as we said before. Also, you might want to use NoSQL system 
if your data model fits. Like we said in LinkedIn's example, we said that a better representation of data in LinkedIn's database would be in graph than in a table with rows and columns. And that's due to the tremendous amount of unstructured distributed data. And the last and most important point is when you want high performance and stability. To summarize, if your data is very structured, SQL is a great choice for you. However, if your data requirements aren't clear or if your data is unstructured, then no SQL may be your choice. All right, so it's time to wrap it up, guys. Thank you very much for watching. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Or if you have a complicated question that requires to check out your code and reviewing it, you can email me on info at backbrace.com. And whether me or someone from my team will get back to you with an answer. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like, share and comment on the video to help YouTube recommending this to other viewers. Thanks again and I will see you in the next video. Have a good one.